magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Mag-umpisa na po tayo sa ating webinar session ngayong hapon na ito. Kasama Teachers Community, kasama po stands for Science and Kamathematics. Kasama Teachers Community is a professional online community for Filipino K-12 science and mathematics teachers launched by the University of the Philippines National Institute for Science and Mathematics Education Development or mas kilala po kami sa tawag na UP NISMED. <clears throat> And um, Kasama Teachers Community po is in partnership with Gokong Way Brothers Foundation. To know more about our platform, please watch this video. Okay, so yan po ang video natin for Kasama Teachers Community. Aside from webinars, we also continuously develop content and learning resources such as lesson plans, activities and exercises, as well as assessment and test items, among other things, uh, which could be of help to you as you prepare for, the open, for, for uh, your classes. <clears throat> Especially po, ano, now, now that we have transitioned to the next normal. Uh, now, how do we register? Just visit www.kasamateachers.ph, which is now flashed on your screen, and type in the caption and sign up for free. Connect with your co-teachers. Connect with Kasama Teachers community. Muli po, welcome to Kasama Webinars by Kasama Teachers Community. Ako pong muli si Michael Anthony Mantala. Uh, hopefully po makasama rin natin mamaya si Ma'am Celia Balbina. No? Um, ako po ay isang science education specialist ng UP NISMED at ang inyo po magiging tagapagpadaloy sa webinar session natin ngayong hapon. This session is made possible by the UP National Institute for Science and Mathematics Education Development o UP NISMED in partnership with Gokong Way Brothers Foundation. UP NISMED is a research and extension unit of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, whose mandate is to help improve science and mathematics education in the country. GBF is a family foundation whose core thrust is advancing STEM education, believing that this is the driving force toward sustainable national development. In 2011, UP NISMED established Kasama Teachers to help teachers during the transition to the K-12 basic education curriculum. In 2019, UP NISMED and GBF partnered to bring an improved one-stop hub for communication, collaboration, learning, and development for Filipino K-12 science and mathematics educators. Through its website, kasamateachers.ph, Kasama provides free quality teaching resources, a platform for sharing best practices, and professional development opportunities to K-12 science and mathematics teachers. Now, more than ever, Kasama Teachers Community will continue to bring you relevant and helpful opportunities for professional development and develop learning resources to help you carry out your classes. Kasama nyo kami, Kasama Teachers. As we begin today's webinar session, just a few reminders. Uh, wag po tayong mahihiyang magtanong. If you have questions, just comment with your school and division. We will be collecting your questions and have our panel answer these questions before the session ends. Feel free to tag your friends, message them, and invite them to join uh, this webinar anytime. Today's session on teaching mathematics through text and tech would not be possible if it were not for the time and expertise of our resource speakers. Our first resource speaker is a science education specialist uh, from the elementary mathematics group of UP NISMED. Her specialty areas are curriculum studies, mathematics education and problem solving based instruction, 
Uh, she also has taught mathematics and education courses across grade levels and has served as a school principal in local and international schools. She is a graduate of UP Diliman and Chiba University in Japan. She finished a data science immersion program from, her, from, from um, the group For the Women, and her advocacy is employing data science skills and analytics in education research. Let us welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Maria Teresa Capule Navarro. <laughs> Okay, our second resource speaker is also a science education specialist from the high school mathematics group of UP NISMED. He specializes in the integration of computers in teaching mathematics. He graduated uh, MA Mathematics from UP Diliman and attended a 1.5 year teaching training program in Tsukuba University, um, Japan in Japan under the Mong Mombuka Gakusho scholarship. He is also the leader or the lead trainer of the Jiuchibra Institute of Manila. Let us welcome po uh, Mr. Guillermo P. Bautista Jr. Hi, JR. Oh, good afternoon, po, Okay, so um, umpisahan na po natin ang bahaginan po natin ngayong hapon na ito. Ang una pong magbabahagi ng kanyang expertise ng kanyang kaalaman po ay si uh, Miss Esa Kapulen Navarro. Miss Esa, magandang hapon sa iyo. Magandang hapon Sir Mike. Um, salamat po at ako ay masaya at kapiling ko ulit ang mga ating mga kasama teachers at sa ating kasama community. So, I'll begin my presentation. So, mathematics teachers want to use handwritten overhead drew on blackboard and even or even smart board and scribbled in notebook. So mathematics is one of those subjects that needs a lot of visualization, formula, equation, and expression. So and dami natin, as teachers, and dami natin kailangan i visualize. Okay. At ito tayo bago yung pandemic. And then all of a sudden this year we we turn into Okay, so with all the lockdowns and absence of face-to-face -face interactions this year, we rely on various teaching learning modalities and now share in discussion posts, emails, and we send documents back and forth in our LMSs or even in social media sites like Facebook and Messenger. So in this new digital forum, how do we show messy live examples of doing mathematics? So how can we make our lessons interactive and enticing to our students. So without sacrificing the accuracy of our content. And then how do we also maximize our social media platforms in sharing information in our mathematics classes? So as a mathematics teacher and now a homeschooling parent, so I'm a parent to a six-year-old boy who's enrolled in a public school. So madalas naka-modular po kami, remote modular. So based on my experience as a teacher and a parent, I have encountered a number of mathematics problems that I hope were presented in a more accurate way. So let me give you an example. So looking at this one, I usually see this in test. So we use pi when we teach circle. So are we using the right symbol if we put it in this way that pi is equal to 3.14? What is pi really equal to? Do we use equal sign or should we use the double tilde? So misuse of mathematical symbols and notation may lead to misconception. So as mathematics educators, we have to be careful with this. So what we teach in elementary will prepare our students to high school and later to college. So it's not easy for all students to unlearn mistakes and redo learning. So using the right symbol, and notation is important in teaching mathematics content. So as early as elementary, we have to be conscious on the proper use of mathematical symbols and notation. So here's another example. Sometimes these mistakes are because of our limitations as teachers, okay? So for example, in this notation, this is encoded in Word or PowerPoint. Yung iba sa atin, nag yung insert symbol. So by using insert symbol, which is limited in terms of presenting accurate mathematics 
expression, ganito yung nagiging labas ng square root of 25. So that is why um, it would be nice and it will be beneficial for us teachers if we know how to um, use equation editors to present better written expression or equation. So note that mathematical symbols are a concise way of giving lengthy instructions related to numbers or, and logic. So mathematical symbols are a communication tool. So symbols are used to eliminate the need to write long and plain language instructions to describe calculations and other processes. So mga kasama, tingnan natin tong dalawang expression na ito. So which is written properly, A or B? So I'll give you 10 seconds to type in your answer in the comment box sa Facebook. And yan, ano kaya ang mas magandang way to present it? A or B? So para sa akin po, mas maganda yatang i-present siya kung gagayahin po natin si letter B. So now more than ever, we rely a lot on teaching and learning materials in text and digital format. So one of our goals in this session is to be able to create aesthetically pleasing mathematical expressions and equations. So good afternoon. I am Maria Teresa G. Capule Navarro, or Teacher Esa. Welcome to the text part of this webinar, which is Teaching Mathematics Using LaTeX. Okay? So in this session, we will try to know a little bit of LaTeX and how to code fractions, exponents, and radicals. We will also try to explore how LaTeX code can be used other than creating beautiful mathematical expressions or equations for our print and digital materials. So since a lot of us are familiar with MS Word or Microsoft Word, I will show some trick on how to extract LaTeX codes from Word documents. So huwag po kayong matakot na puro coding tayo. May mga tips and tricks po akong isi-share sa inyo mamaya. So with the increasing use of digital technology and online learning in schools, knowing a little bit of LaTeX can help math teachers communicate effectively with both students and colleagues. So coding is quite intimidating to some. So kahit ako po, um, nag-aral nag lang po ako ng coding last year when, when I was fortunate enough to be um, given a scholarship for data science. Pero kung matyaga naman po tayo at open-minded naman tayo to learn new skills, hindi naman po siya mahirap. Okay? So what is LaTeX? LaTeX, which is pronounced LaTeX, as have, I've been saying it, or LaTeX, Mas natural lang po sa ating Pilipino yung LaTeX, kaya yun na lang. Hindi po LaTeX ha, LaTeX. Okay, it's a document preparation system for high-quality typesetting. It is most often used for medium to large technical or scientific documents, but it can be used for almost any form of publishing. So LaTeX is not a word processor, so hindi siya katulad ng Microsoft Word. Instead, LaTeX encourages authors not to worry too much about the appearance of their document, but to concentrate on getting the right content. So, kaya siya very advisable for mathematics teachers um, in terms of encoding our equations and expressions. Okay, so why do teachers have to learn LaTeX or at least be exposed to it and know that it exists? Okay, first, LaTeX looks better. Seriously, if you've seen documents written in LaTeX, it's very sophisticated and classy. Okay? So, ako, in this presentation, I use MathType. MathType is an add-on in Google Slides. Um, it's actually getting better at visual appeal, but nothing beats LaTeX for refinement and polish. Okay? Next, LaTeX is the mathematical typesetting standard in all technical disciplines and in many related fields. Most, if not all, major publications in math, computer science, engineering, and physics use LaTeX as the preferred typesetting system. So yung mga teachers na interesado rin po sa research at medyo technical yung gustong gawing research, so yung ibang publications po, LaTeX po ang kanilang preferred typesetting program. So LaTeX is becoming a standard elsewhere, especially on the web. So just last year, Google Documents added an equation editor that is basically a stripped down LaTeX editor with a point and click interface. The widely popular online presentation tool Prezi 
if you're fami familiar po with Prezi, has said that LaTeX integration is coming soon. And then yung WordPress.com blogs, like Casting Out Nine, can do LaTeX, and so can Wikispaces, and more are popping up. So with this, Filipino mathematics teachers, or even science teachers, who are interested to publish content online, or publish documents or articles, will benefit a lot in using LaTeX. So, ako, personally, gusto ko siya kasi libre siya. So, LaTeX is free. We like free sites and apps, di ba? So, you can download it right now for, your, for, for just about any operating system imaginable. So, whether you're using um, Microsoft or Mac or Linux, you can, you can download um, LaTeX for free. And then, so... And this is a system that has been around for 40 years. Kung ika-count po natin yung text na kung saan doon nagsimula ang LaTeX and has millions of users. So, many of whom actively contribute to further to the further development of the system by writing specialized packages and macros. But we will not focus on this today and use familiar platforms first. So, hayaan nyo, hindi tayo magiging sobrang technical. Kahit ako mismo po, I'm just a user, hindi rin ako sobrang technical na tao. So, but if you want to further discuss this thing, I am very much willing to um, exchange emails with you. I'll, I'll share my email later on, or you can send me a message through Messenger. And last point, LaTeX is what you make it. You can use LaTeX with a point-and-click IDE or Integrated Development Environment, katulad ng makikita natin sa Microsoft Word mamaya at sa, sa Google. Or you can type everything out by hand with a text editor and compile from the command line or anything in between. It's actually up to you as the user. So other proprietary programs force a menu-driven point-and-click approach upon you, for which you may like but may not like. So yung mga ibang gumagamit po ng LaTeX, gusto nila dere-derecho silang nagko-code. Meron naman iba, katulad ko, gumagamit pa rin po ako ng point-and-click approach. Okay? So, ito po yung halimbawa ng mga mathematical problem sets na kinode po sa LaTeX. Kung titignan nyo po, I've, I've encountered before um, colleagues or co-teachers na yung mga gantong klaseng problem, yung iisa-isahin nila sa Microsoft Word na i-coconnect yung lines. So, minsan, hindi accurate yung angle or minsan, hindi nag-limit yung dalawang line. So, para maiwasan po natin ito, yung mga gantong klaseng scenario. So, makikita nyo naman how how the problem set was written beautifully using LaTeX. So, yung mga equations din po, ayan po, so, mas avoid po natin yung mga errors na pwede naman talaga natin ma-avoid. Okay? So, I actually have a link here. Um, I'll be sharing my presentation later on. You can access it and see what other things LaTeX could do. So, yung mga text din po dito actually, sa LaTeX din po siya kinod. So, yung pag-number sa kanya, pag-format sa kanya, lahat po yan sa LaTeX na po ginawa. Okay? So, katulad po na nabanggit ko kanina, if if you're a LaTeX user, you're, you're concentrating more on your content rather than the layout. Kasi LaTeX could help you with that. Pero, how come we do not learn LaTeX? So, I have shown you why it is good to learn LaTeX, but it is also good to know some downsides, okay, of LaTeX. So first, LaTeX has a learning curve. So hindi ko sinasabi na madali siya. It's actually, um, you can you can think of it as a learning a new language. When I when I learned a programming language, Python, para ako nag-aral ng bagong lenguahe. Okay? So, kailangan mo talaga siyang aralin, kailangan mo siyang intindihin yung mga syntax niya, yung logic niya, kailangan mo talaga rin siyang i-practice para parang tayo pag nagtuturo we practice and we practice para mas matutunan ng bata yung yung mga tinuturo natin so kung makikita nyo as your um, document gets complicated mas okay gamitin talaga yung latex okay so next um another issue is that if you make sufficiently important mistake in your code latex will give you error messages messages instead of an output file. So, hindi mag-write mag yung ginawa nyo, hindi lalabas yung product nyo kapag may error kayo sa, sa, sa inyong code. But with practice and forum sites in Google, ako po ay suki na mga 
na mga forum sites like Stack Overflow. Pag may mga codes akong nag error I always post there. May mga mababait po tayong co-programmers na 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 encounter na rin yung mistake na yon or pwede kayong maghanap sa mga thread ng mga possible mistakes nyo tapos makikita niyo na rin mostly yung sagot doon sa sa mga thread na ito sa internet so you will be able to address mistakes in your code so debugging time decreases pretty rapidly with experience so when you say debugging ito yung pagko-correct po natin ng mga codes natin and lastly LaTeX is counterintuitive so like any other programming languages, it is a language we use to communicate with computers. So, hindi naman ito yung language na ginagamit natin every day sa conversations natin. So, um, it is not totally obvious either, but with a little guidance, lahat can make perfect sense even to our students. Okay. okay. So, kahit sa high school tayo mag-introduce or expose sila, wala pong problema. So, if you're a math or science teacher, make it a project to learn LaTeX yourself and start using it in your classes. Then, teach it to your students. It is important that teachers are open to this new skill so that we will not deprive our students of additional learning opportunities. Okay? So, paano natin magagamit yung LaTeX sa classes natin? First, I would suggest that you use an IDE, yung sinabi ko sa kanina na Integrated Development Environment, or a user-friendly text editor rather than a plain no-frill text editor or EMAP. Okay? So, instead na mag, yung para mga terminal sa computer natin, we can use text editors. So, for Windows machine, so mga gumagamit ng Windows, we can use Technic, uh, Technic Center IDE that gives point and click code insertion. Sa mga gumagamit naman po ng Mac, pwede po tayong gumamit ng Technic. If we have money to pay for it, or Aquamax, ito po yung mga symbol sila, Aquamax if we don't if we want free. And then kung may naglilinux naman po sa ating mga teachers, we can use Kyle as a text editor. And si Sir JR po, um ni-recommend niya po sa akin yung um TechMaker na pwede po siya sa tatlong nabanggit ko, sa Windows, sa Mac at sa Linux. So kung kahit anong ang klase po yung inyong machine, pwede po siya mag-run. Pero meron din po tayong online version which is called Overlay. So, isa nating, ano yan, overleaf again. So, that's um, an online version of the text editor. Okay. So, now na meron na kayong text editor para mag-experiment ng ating mga codes, we start small and simple and build gradually. So, when first getting students to use LaTeX, restrict them to just a small, relatively simple document. So, one, that, one that's mostly text with a little bit of math type setting required. So, mas text muna tayo and then some equations, okay? Small early successes will convince them that learning LaTeX is worthwhile. So, I'm sharing this as a point of view of the students, pero kung kayo ay teachers and first time nyo pong mag LaTeX, I think this advice also works for you. So, look for training videos to students and have them learn the system on their own. So um, then have a great period where students get extra credit for doing their assignment in LaTeX. Pwede kayo magpa-bonus pag ginawa nila yung assignment nila in LaTeX instead na sulat kamay, halimbawa ganyan, then we can give them um, additional points for that. And then start acquiring it after the grace period expires. Okay? And then third, use it yourself. So students will learn from your example. So try writing your next syllabus in LaTeX. Okay? That's a challenge or a part of it perhaps. And your class hand and your class handouts and your tests, um, perhaps you can use excellent exam package. So when you use it and students begin to use it, they see that they are producing math that looks as good as what the pros do, and they get excited. So kung ako yung student or ako yung teacher, to sa ko ng exam katulad ng pinakita ko kanina na very accurate siya, very sophisticated yung pagkakapresent, parang sense of achievement kayo yun sa akin, di ba? And then lastly, um, when you give a document made with LaTeX, also give out the source code that generated it. So, um, sa coding community po, we always um, share our codes to the public. Kasi it, um, it's an open system. So, minsan they, they give us feedback kung, kung how to improve the code, how to can we simplify it, things like that. So, students can then look at what you created and ask, 
how did my teacher do that? So, and get the answer immediately from your code and do it themselves. So, matatry nila agad. So, kahit ako nga, as, as mentioned a while ago, mga more than one year pa lang po ako nag-code, I myself have learned about half of the coding I know from this method. So, lagi ako nag-share. So, I have a GitHub account. It's a repository of my code. Tapos, and or ako din po, kumukuha ako ng mga codes dun sa GitHub and then I adapt it or tweak it from uh, codes from someone else. Um, and it's very it's a very effective means of learning sa akin. Um, kasi almost anything can be done with a computer now. Okay. So here are some LaTeX codes. So makikita nyo, ito yung tinatawag na syntax or paano natin i-code. So, for example, itong um, 3 times 5 equals 15. So, ito po yung LaTeX code na pwede natin i-enter. Pag in-enter po natin siya, ito po yung lalabas sa kanya. Okay? So, very, ano naman siya, very simple codes lang po ang ating pag-aaralan ngayon, which are focusing to simple mathematics, um, a, a, more simple mathematics concepts like fractions, um, radicals, and exponents. Okay, so yung fraction, so as mentioned, ito yung tatlong ating um, ipofocus ngayon. So sa fraction, ito po yung kanyang code or syntax. Okay, so um, ang, ang LaTeX po ay gumagamit ng backslash, backslash most of the time. So backslash crack, tapos ano yung nasa numerator mo inside uh, braces, and then ano po yung nasa denominator natin inside the braces again. So, for exponent, we just use the caret, okay, ito po yon, and then we put our exponent. So, later may mga samples po ako para makita nyo po. And then, for radicals, we use backslash um, square root, the expression, or if we want the nth root, okay, this is how we do it, backslash square root, and then we put n inside the nth root or n inside the um, bracket, and then inside the braces is your expression. Okay? So, let's practice. Kung, kung nasa computer po kayo ngayon at meron kayong word, um, pwede nyo pong i-access yung word ngayon. Tapos habang nag-webinar nag tayo, you can practice. Or um, if you like, um, you can replay this webinar, i-upload yata ito sa kasama or through Facebook, pwede nyo i-practice yung mga codes later on. Okay? So, using MS Word, we just have to click equation. So, i-click lang po natin siya. Pag, pag lumabas na po yung ano, equation, magkakaroon kayo ng box. So, pwede nyo pong i-practice na, sorry, um, pwede nyo pong i-practice na i-code ang fraction. So, i-encode nyo lang po yung backslash, frac, and then inside um, braces, you have A and then B. So, sa pinakita ko pa kung kaninang code sa inyo, A will be our numerator and then B will become our denominator. And then for exponents naman po, we will be using the caret, okay? So, for example, kung makikita nyo kung familiar kayo sa equation na to, this is actually the Pythagorean theorem. So, A caret 2 plus B caret 2 equals C caret 2, Okay? And then sa radicals naman po, um, we're getting the nth root of x. So, paano po natin siya i-code? Backslash, sqrt, and then inside your bracket is n, and then inside the braces is x. Okay? Now, pag na-code na po natin yung mga equations natin, okay, we can, um, we can click LaTeX here, and then we can convert. Okay? So, pag kinonvert na po natin, lalabas po yung options natin. So, kung gusto lang po natin i-convert itong last na, itong naka-highlight po, pwede po natin ipindutin yung current professional or current linear. Current professional po will give you this kind, this ano na po, interface. Papakita nyo na po yung mga equations. When you key in current linear, it will show you the code. Ito po yung mga papakita ng linear. Okay? So, bakit ko ito pinapakita sa inyo? So, maganda na alam natin yung mga codes, pero kahit ako din po na nagko-code, hindi ko naman po kabisado lahat. So, ang Microsoft kasi, meron naman po siyang um, graphic use, um, user interface. So, pwede tayong mag 
encode ng fraction, ganyan. Tapos, kung gusto ko lang kunin yung codes niya, pwede ko siyang i-convert using this, um, using this um, command. Okay? I can just click on convert. Makukuha ko na po yung mga codes niya for LaTeX. Okay? So, sana ma-practice nyo po later. Kasi, um, magandang matutunan po ito. Papakita ko sa inyo kung saan natin siya pwedeng gamitin. Okay? So, ito pa po yung mga sample ko na codes na pre-prepare. So, alibawa, three shifts, and then you're adding fractions. Yan, um, what do you call this? Um, Pythagorean theorem, square root of 4, and root of 8. So, ito po yung kanyang professional look. Ito naman po yung linear, linear look niya or yung latex look po natin. Ito yung latex code po natin. Okay? So, once we know the code, where can we use it? So, here are some ideas. There are actually interactive mathematics content sites like bookwidgets.com. Hindi po siya free pero may trial po siya. Pero makakagawa po tayo ng flashcards, makakagawa po tayo ng quizzes, makakagawa din po tayo ng mga games. Itong games na ito yung para mga memory games natin. So just by knowing the LaTeX code, so mga equations na gusto nating um, gamitin, pwede po natin siya ipasok to sa mga websites na ito. Now, remember, pag, pag ano po kasi, hindi po natin alam yung codes, lagi tayong nag, anong tawag dito, um, kinakapture natin or screenshot, tapos picture natin. Pero pag nakakodes po, mas flexible tayo. So, um, I know na mas madaling gamitin for most of us yung um, point and click. Pero if you know a little bit of LaTeX, and if you know how to extract these codes from Microsoft Word, pwede natin gawin yung document natin into more interactive mathematics content like this three. Okay? Flashcards, online quizzes, and games. Okay? Another use of LaTeX is sa Google. As I mentioned a while ago. So, I'll, I'll, I'll play a very short video. So, trinay ko siya sa Google Doc. Okay? So, instead of clicking the point and click, kinocode ko siya. Tapos, biglang lalabas na yung, lalabas na agad yung, um, alam mo yan, fraction. Backslash, frac lang. Lalabas na yung fraction bar. And then, I can key in already the numbers that I want to be my numerator and denominator. The same with square root. And then, the same also with exponent. So, if you know yung mga little commands na to, instead of searching it one by one in this, in the ribbon, um, mas mabilis nyo siyang makukode. Okay? So, okay. So, another one na, na ako personally ay na-fascinate, pwede po natin siyang gamitin sa Messenger or Facebook post natin. So, um, kung ginagamit nyo po, yun-utilize nyo po ang Messenger as a means of communication to your colleagues and to your teacher, um, to your students, you can actually use LaTeX, okay? Pero hindi po siya automatic, ha? Um, um, at saka may difference lang po sa code. So, kanina po, pinakita ko sa inyo na backslash yung ginagamit natin sa code. For, for Messenger or for Facebook, we may use the dollar sign. We, we have to use the dollar sign um, in the beginning and at the end of the code. Ito po siya, makikita niyo po dito sa sample dito. Yan, nag siya ng dollar sign. Tapos, nung trinay ko po siya sa aking, um, sa aking laptop, so actually, <clears throat> this one, the last two um, pictures, are actually my conversation with my husband. Kasi tinatry ko siya sa messenger. So, I have to install text all the things. So, it's an extension for Chrome. So, kailangan nyo pong maglagay ng extension for Chrome. Tapos, yung sisend nyo rin ng message, kailangan din po siya mag, mag um, what do you call this, mag-install din po nun. So, you just have to go to Google Chrome. You have to click on settings. And then, my extension. And then, this a search box po for searching extension. So, you can just type um, LaTeX for Facebook. So, may lalabas yon sa akin nga check all the things. So, after ko pong install yun, tapos nagko-code na po ako sa messenger, ganito po yung lumalabas sa conversations namin mag-asawa. So, ako, in, di ba, parang instead na copy and paste ng mga pictures, 
ang saya lang na kaya mo siyang gawin. And actually, the quotes that I, I use here, I just copy and paste it kasi readily available na po siya sa internet. So, it's nothing na kailangan natin gawin po from scratch. Okay? And the last application that I could share with you is yung um, GeoGebra. So, Latic is also using GeoGebra. So, which will be explained further by Sir JR later in the next segment of our webinar. Okay? So, before I end, let me share one of my personal advocacies, which is data and information literacy in education. So, for me, coding is the literacy of today, and it helps practice 21st century skills such as problem solving, teamwork, and analytical thinking. So, basic coding skills is also needed for many jobs, lalo na ngayon at the future of jobs po. So, as teachers, we should try or at least be exposed to new skills so that we could support and encourage our students to explore more opportunities to learn. So, sa pag-explore po natin na to, marami pong mga MOOCs, massive, massively open online courses or webinars or YouTube video content na tungkol po dito. So, as teachers, we do not have to be a good coder, but creating opportunities for our students will be more than enough. Okay? So, this ends my sharing. Now, to see how LaTeX is used in GeoGebra and to discuss how GeoGebra can make mathematics topics more visual and enticing, let us all welcome Sir JR. Maraming salamat, Esa. Um, Miss Esa, maraming salamat sa napakayaman ano, na pagtalakay mo ng gamit ano, ng LaTeX sa, <coughs> math, sa, sa mathematics instruction. Um, makasama, um, gaya po na nabanggit ni uh, Miss Esa, may learning curve po ito. Ano? Um, mm, bago yeah, po tayo sir. pumapag sa GeoGebra na pagtalakay ni uh, Sir JR, um, isang tanong lang, uh, Miss Esa. Um, okay. Ano yung pinaka naging challenge mo uh, learning uh, this uh, this program? Ako ako talaga sir coding as a whole hindi lang po LaTeX pati rin po yung um, Python na mas komportable akong gamitin at yung R din po na sinisimulan kong aralin. Ano siya um, yun nga yun nabanggit ko kanina counterintuitive siya. These are not us the usual conversations na ginagamit natin. Um coding is like learning a new language. It's actually the language we use to communicate with our machines or with computers. So, sa akin, as a non-technical person, mahirap po talaga siya, sir. Hindi ko sasabihing madali. Okay? Mahirap talaga siya. So, as a whole, dahil wala po akong background talaga, um, I just learned coding from Code Academy. As in, nag-enroll lang ako ng, um, ng mga courses online. Um, yun, mahirap talaga siya, sir. Pero I think it's part me it sparked some interest within me kasi iniisip ko no yung yung mga problemang kinakaharap ng mga estudyante at kakaharapin nila in the future will mostly involve tech problem okay so if i do not equip myself with these skills or at least i'm um, try to be exposed with latex or python or r Ano po, sir, eh? I think I'm depriving my students of opportunity. So, it doesn't mean na kailangan kung ako ay sobrang galing. Hindi po, sir, nagka-copy and paste din po ako ng codes. And I'm proud to say that. Hindi naman po siya matama. Pero yung, yung willingness lang to learn siguro, sir. So, um, kung if I will cite specific difficulties, the entire process is really difficult, okay? But but I think you can overcome it with the right support system. You know, I, I joined um chat groups or um groups na nakapag-exchange kami ng mga codes namin or mga katulad ko rin na non-technical na nagpo-code ngayon. So, yun, sir. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, at least, uh, nalaman ano, ng mga kasama natin, Miss Esa, no, na you're a non-tech person who learned uh, yeah, I am this... Not. Stuff. Definitely not. Okay. <laughs> oh, pero yeah. I, I mean, a non-tech person like you was able to um, learn the tightrope ano, of programming. Uh, definitely, uh, every non-tech person, siguro, for as long as there's interest in them, and would also be able to uh, do just as much. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Once uh, again, thank you so much, uh, Miss Esa. No uh, 
the good thing about um, this webinar, mga kasang, uh, pwede po itong balikan ano, sa ating recording. Ano. So, uh, bumisita lang po muli kayo sa ating Facebook um, page at uh, pwede nyo pong balikan doon ang recording po ng ating webinar ngayong hapon. So, dumako na po tayo ano, sa pagpapatuloy po ng ating webinar ngayong hapon. Um, magandang hapon muli, uh, Sir, Sir JR. Sir JR. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. So I'll talk about uh, teaching mathematics uh, using GeoGebra. And this is the outline of my talk. First, we'll talk a bit about uh, GeoGebra. And the second part, uh, I'll show you some uh, sample lessons on using GeoGebra in teaching uh, three different topics. Introduction to area, the Pythagorean theorem, and Riemann sums for uh, senior high school. Uh, I'll try to connect uh, Miss Essa's uh, session with mine. So maybe just one example on how to use LaTeX in uh, GeoGebra. And after that, I'll show you some applets and resources that you can use if you want to learn uh, about GeoGebra. So what is GeoGebra? GeoGebra is a dynamic mathematics software uh, for teaching and learning mathematics. And uh, what's good about it is it's that it's free and open source. It runs on major operating systems if you're using Mac or uh, Linux or even win uh, or Windows. You can use GeoGebra. If you're using iOS or Android, you can also use GeoGebra. And lastly, it runs on computers, tablets, and mobile phones. So wala kayong takas, no? Meron talaga sa... Meron siya sa lahat ng ng uh, platforms and hardware. So the second part is, I'll show you some sample lessons on uh, using GeoGebra. So the first one is a task on area. So this is a sample task that can be given to grade schools, pupils, I think four or five. Your family wants to make a garden and you were asked to select its size. Move sliders A and B to choose the size of the garden. So if you already have the applet, this is the, uh, this is a sample of a GeoGebra applet. So with the problem, the pupils can move the sliders and change the size of the garden. So one unit is one meter. And here are some guide questions. What are the length and width of your garden? So of course, the pupils will uh, construct different, different uh, sizes and uh, the answers will vary. How many squares of side, one, side length one meter covers the rectangle completely? So this is foregrounding the concept of area. For the third question, how did you get the number of squares of sides of side length one meter that completely covers your garden? So the purpose of uh, these questions is to let the students see that they can actually count the number of squares, not just by one, uh, not just counting one by one, but also counting by groups. And this is just a review of what they have learned when they, when they uh, learned multiplication. They can answer six groups of four or four groups of case, uh, four groups of six in case that they, they have a four by six uh, rectangle. And the next question is, how do we represent four groups of six? How about six groups of four? So again, this is connecting the representation, the visual representation to the abstract representation uh, that's from, from uh, grouping to multiplication. And lastly, uh, what can you observe about the relationship among 4, 6, and 24? So the students or the pupils would uh, hopefully be able to see that uh, 24 is a product of 6 and 4. 
the teacher can then go to the applet and ask the students, or I'm sorry, <laughs> keep on saying students, but ask the pupils if their observation is still true. They can also collect the students' answers and write them on the board. This is to further reinforce the idea that the number of squares is uh, equal to the product of the length and the width of the rectangle. So as you can observe, we haven't mentioned yet the word area. It's an, we are introducing the concept without mentioning the word area. And for the sixth question, how do the number of squares of side length one meter relate to its length and width? So this is already the abstraction. And once the students answer this question, the, the teacher can now uh, introduce the concept of area, which is the number of square units that can cover a specific region. Now, how do we construct the applet used in this lesson? So I think this is, uh, this is uh, the interest of many, no? Paano ba natin kagamitin yung GeoGebra uh, to construct the applet that, it, that you have seen earlier? So ito yung applet, di ba? Mukhang mahirap ba siyang ano? Mahirap ba siyang gawin? Well, um, I'll show you how to do it and you'll see later that it's not very hard. We'll be needing sliders. Ito yung slider natin, yung A and B. So if you want to follow the tutorial, you can go to geogebra.org backslash, oh sorry, forward slash classic. You can download also GeoGebra later, but uh, there's an online version. So it's okay if you use the online version. So first we uh, select the slider tool and then click on the graphics view. And then we select the minimum value, let's say three. The minimum value is three, maximum is 10, and increment is one. So that's slider A. And then we uh, create another slider, slider B, again from three to 10, and increment of one. And then we uh, plot our first vertex, zero, zero. So this is the first vertex of the rectangle. We fix the object. Well, it's not, re it's not really necessary, but we can do that to avoid movement. And then we have uh, A zero. or the second vertex. If I move A here, as you can see, uh, point B is moving. And then I'll plot the third vertex, zero B. So if I move B, point C here also moves. And then I'll plot AB, which is the fourth vertex of the rectangle. So after that, we just use the polygon tool to connect the points. And there's our uh, rectangle. So tatanggalin lang natin yung mga uh, coordinate axis and the grid. That's the last step. So we move the grid. And then for the coordinate axis, We just uh, choose major grid lines. Okay. And then we uh, hide the labels. Okay, so if the tutorial is too fast, you can come back to this video later because I think this will be uploaded in the Kasama Facebook page. So there's our rectangle. Now 
Now for the second lesson, it's a lesson on Pythagorean theorem. Squares are created using the sides of a right triangle as shown, investigate by moving points A, B, and C. This is the second applet that I created. So the first image, as you can see, the, the students were already observed that the sum of the areas of the two smaller squares is equal to the area of the largest square. If they move the points, the vertices of triangle, they, the relation should, the relationship among the area should also hold. So, dapat ma observe siya ng estudyante, no? So, for example, 21 and 68 hundredths plus 28 and 6 hundredths is 49 and 75 hundredths. Of course, may mga rounding, rounding off yan, no? Uh, but uh, the teacher should, should process why uh, the sum is not exact. So, for the processing, what do you observe? So we expect the students to observe the sum of the areas of the smaller squares is equal to the area of the largest square. For the abstraction, if we let A and B be the length of the two shorter sides, so this, these are the two shorter sides, and C be the length of the hypotenuse, the students are already familiar with the word hypotenuse, so they should be able to answer the questions. So A, the area of the smaller square, this one is A squared because the side is A. The area of this one is B squared because the side is B and the area of this one is C squared. And after that, what equation describes the relationship among the areas of the squares? So since the sum of the areas of the two smaller squares is equal to the largest square, we should be able to uh, give this equation. And the fourth question is the abstraction. This is already the Pythagorean theorem. We should be able to see that the sum of the square of the length of the shorter sides of a right triangle is equal to the square of the length of the longest side. So again, how do we construct the applet used in this lesson? So we can choose different uh, perspectives on algebra. We have graphing and geometry. We have 3D. I'll show you later some applets uh, on 3D geometry. So we go to geometry and then we select segment. And then we want a line which is perpendicular to the segment and passing through A. So perpendicular line and then we click on the segment and click on A. And then we uh, plot, we create a point on the line and then connect the sides of the right triangle. So we don't need this line, so we hide it. Right click and then show object. And then we connect A and C. Now, usually the Right angle is named C, so we can rename the point. We have, we have C, and then we rename this A. And as you can see in the previous slide, we need to construct squares using the sides of the triangle. So to do this, we use the regular polygon tool and select the endpoints of the sides. Regular polygon, we need the square, so the vertice, number of vertices is four. And then C and A also and then B and C. And then we just display the area. So when you display the area or whatever properties, for example, for points, we display the coordinates. 
for line segments, you display the length. So here we display the area by right-clicking on the object, clicking on settings, and then you go to the basic tab and then show label, you check on the show label and you choose value. We do this also on, we do this to the other squares. And there's your applet. So hindi naman siya ganun ka, ano, no? Hindi naman siya mahirap. Totally a few steps lang siya. Okay, so for the third lesson, for senior high school, area under the curve. So yung mga nagtuturo ng integral calculus. So this is the task. One of the famous mathematicians, or mathematics problems in ancient times is on finding the area under a curve. To solve this, some mathematicians used rectangles for approximating such areas. What is approximate area? between the graph of the function f of x equals x squared and the x-axis from x equals one to x equals two. So in this problem, the assumption is that the students already know how to use GeoGebra. So dapat marunong na sila, no? So let's check the applet. So this is the applet. Students can uh, move the slider to change the number of rectangles that covers the area under the curve. And then here are the questions for this discussion. What is the approximate area under the curve? They should be able to answer this because GeoGebra displays the area. Here at n equals seven, the uh, area is two and 1,224, 10,000s. How do you think GeoGebra calculate? This should be calculated. How do you think GeoGebra calculated the approximate area under the curve? This is just to uh, let the students realize that the area displayed here is actually the sum of the areas of the rectangles. And for the abstraction, uh, if we let the area of the first rectangle be a sub one, of the second rectangle be a sub two, and then for the uh, nth rectangle be a sub n, then they can express the approximate area s as a sub one plus a sub two, all the way up to a sub n. And they already have learned the summation notation, so they should be able to write it in this notation. How do we express the area in terms of the length and the width of the rectangle? Now for each rectangle, they should uh, be able to realize that the height of the rectangle is actually the value of the function. So for example, here, the value of the function at x sub i is f of x sub i. And the width of the rectangle, kasi pare-pareho naman yung rectangles natin, same lang yung width niya, if we subtract the coordinates x sub i plus one minus x sub i, that's delta x. And the area of the rectangle is the product of f of x sub i, the height or the length if you want, and then the delta x, which is the width. So we can replace a sub i with f of x sub i times delta x. Number four, how can we approximate the area under the curve better? using the uh, rectangles. So of course the students will realize that as n gets larger and larger, the area or the approximate area uh, gets closer and closer to the actual area under the curve. Mas lumiliit yung mga spaces, yung mga, mga black spaces. So dapat ma-realize ng mga sudyante that the, the area the sum of the areas of the rectangles gets closer and closer to the area of the, the area under the curve. No? And dito pumapasok yung idea ng limits. No? Uh, we can make the area of, we can make the approximate area as close to the actual area by 
choosing a sufficiently large n. So, dadamihan natin yung n natin or lalakihan natin yung n natin. And we can do this by editing. We can uh, edit the maximum value of the slider. If you want, we can make it 100 para mas malapit yung area dun sa actual area na under the curve. What happens as n gets uh, larger or as n gets closer to infinity? So this symbol, they have already learned this when they learned limits, nasa integral calculus na sila. So alam na nila yung symbol na yan. So the approximate area under the curve approaches the actual area as n approaches infinity. So using this, the symbol, ito yung kanina, yung uh, sum ng areas natin, yung rectangle. And then, uh, if you put the word limit as n approaches infinity, we want uh, to n to approach infinity. We want n to approach infinity para maging uh, equal na sila. In fact, this is the limiting sum of uh, the areas. And this is the transition between the sigma notation and the integral notation. So from the sum of the areas of the rectangles as n approaches infinity uh, is actually the integral of the function. So how do we construct the applet used in the lesson? Meron tayong function f of x equals x squared. Akala nyo mahirap ito pero napakadali lang. So we have a function. That's one step. We type the equation of the function. And then we use the slider from 1 to, for example, gusto nyo 100 and the increment is 1. And we change the name of the slider to n. So if we move the slider, And then we want the area from one to two. So the command is just lower sum, the name of the function, f. The second number is the start x value. That's one, kasi one to two tayo. The n value is two. And the number of rectangles is n. Enter. So madami siya kasi 62. O, oh, na siya. So ilang steps lang, no? three to four steps lang. Hindi naman siya ganang kahirap. Okay. Of course, you can use the integral command. Kung gusto nyo talaga malaman yung area from 1 to 2, you can use the integral. The actual area is integral. The name of the function. And then start x value and end x value. So the actual area is 2 and 33 hundredths. Actually, ano siya? Uh, repeating decimal. Never ending repeating decimal. So, pwede natin gamitin yung latex sa GeoGebra. How do we do that? Dito na lang, no? For example, we want to type the quadratic formula. You can just go to text and then click on the graphics view. And then you just uh, click on the LaTeX tab. And then you type the LaTeX code for uh, quadratic formula. So that's backslash frac. Diba naalala nyo kanina kay Miss Esa? Uh, the first, uh, uh, what's inside the first brace is the numerator. So B squared caret b and then caret squared minus 4ac over 2a. But we should have a negative b plus minus. Okay. 
Okay, so ito na yung ating LaTeX na LaTeX for the quadratic form. Oh, may square root pa dapat. So square root, this is should be square root. D squared minus 4AC all over 2. Okay, so uh, you can just uh, learn the code later. And to end my uh, session, I'll show you some of the applets uh, to show you the capabilities of GeoGebra. Kasi yung daming pwedeng gawin. No? So this, this is an example. Uh, this is squaring a binomial, the geometric uh, representation. So we have A squared for this one, AB to AB and B squared. So as you can see, the side here is A plus B and the side length here is also A plus B. So if we compute for the area, a plus b times a plus b, we have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And this is represented geometrically. So yan yung mga pwede nyong gawin si Jojo Brown. Here's another one, yung Pythagorean theorem. The area of the white square here, or, or the square with the white interior, the c squared, and if I move this, the area of the small square is A because this is A. This is A squared. And the area of this is B because this is, uh, the area of this is B squared because this is B. So what can you say about the uh, three areas? This is composition of functions. So I don't have time to explain, but uh, Pwede nyo sigurong i-explore later bakit ganito yung representation niya. This is uh, some simulation of rolling a dice and recording it. So random numbers ito, no? This is on congruence. What can you say about A? Triangle ACE and triangle DCD. They are congruent. What if I move C? Still, they are congruent. If I move this here. Still congruent. So what's, what's the task? The task is to prove that Triangle ACE is congruent to triangle BCD. And this is very easy now. This is SAS. Ayo magload ng iba, no? So let's try to refresh. So this is for science, yung rotation ng mga planets. The rotation is, the ratio is correct, pero yung mga distances hindi yan correct. Kasi impossible siya na uh, to maintain the ratio. So yung Earth, man, the ratio of the rotation is correct. And this, this is very, this is a very good activity if they know how to use GeoGebra kasi magkakompute sila ng ano, ng, and this is ratio and proportion. No? And these are some of the Applets for fun. This is a uh, strand beast. And although this looks like fun, but this is very hard to construct and there's a lot of mathematics involved also. So those are some of the, the things that you can do with GeoGebra. Of course, there are so many things that you can do with it, uh, even in higher mathematics. Ayo lang magload ng iba, no? Uh, even in 3D, ayun, I think nag na yung 3D. This is uh, in elementary school. Nets. Okay. 
it's still loading for you. Ayun na. Kumalaw na siya. So, this is uh, net nets of a net of a cube. So, inaaral natin yan sa elementary agent. And for some resources, you can go to uh, the GeoGebra Institute of Manila. Uh, I, I have uploaded several short videos here. So this one is on uh, making a square from a rectangular piece of paper. Okay, so yan po yung mga sample applets natin. And uh, to conclude, uh, GeoGebra is a great tool for teaching mathematics. However, careful planning is necessary to maximize its potential in developing critical thinking. Napakaganda po ng GeoGebra sa tool, no? pero dapat, kung makita nyo yung mga lesson kanina, uh, -trans meron siyang transition from, from what the students see from the applet. Dapat na pupunta siya sa abstracts kasi that's what mathematics is all about. No? Minsan, napakaganda lang ng visuals pero pag hindi natin siya nadala doon sa the mathematics of the applet, uh, hindi rin okay yung learning. So, maganda ay meron kang visual and meron kang abstract. So, to end, uh, sabi ni George Koros, technology will never place great teachers but in the hands of great teachers, it's transformational. Thank you. Maraming salamat si Sir JR um, sa napaka husay ano na pagbabahagi mo ng uh, topic na ito on GeoGebra and LaTeX. Uh, Sir JR. Meron kang website, right? Ah, uh, meron tayong website sa GeoGebra Institute. Yan, ito ito yan. Ayan, uh -oh. so baka pwede mo silang anyayahan, uh, Sir uh, JR, uh, Institute of Manila. This is a YouTube channel of the GeoGebra Institute. So kung, kung gusto nyo tignan yung mga capabilities ng GeoGebra, we have uh, a lot of applets here. Kaka, ano lang nito, kakagawa lang. No? And then we also have a website at uh, geogebraph.org, GeoGebra Philippines. No? Uh, there are usable applets here. Uh, it's still in the process of migration. Kaya yung mga ibang applets hindi pa siya gumagana because it came from a, an older platform. So hopefully by the end of the year, matatapos na siya. But a lot of applets are already uh, uh, already functioning. For example, this one, yung uh, practice ito ng multiplication of integers. No? So kaninang lalim ng math natin, but you can also use GeoGebra for practice exercises. Now, for example, ito, pwede kayong mag, uh, gumawa ng new set. So random, ito randomly generated by, the, by GeoGebra. Kung tapos nyo na yung isa, pwede yung, you can, uh, you can generate a new set of numbers and that the pupils or the students can practice and they can che check their answers. Now. For example, ito, pag check nyo na yung sagot nila, makikita nila pag may mali. Ito point out sa kanila. The, the mistake. No? So there are a lot of things that you can do with GeoGebra. And of course, we have the GeoGebra Institute of Manila Facebook uh, page. Pinakita ko kanina in a paper folding. So you can, they can just like the page. No? So facebook.com slash GeoGebra Institute of Manila. The website is at geogebraph.org and yung YouTube channel natin ay hindi pa Wala pang ano, wala pang, wala pa siyang URL kasi bago pa lang. So, we will have to request for a new URL. This is just, this is less than a month old. No? So, yeah, they can uh, subscribe and we'll be uploading more uh, applets later and tutorials. 
Right? Nice, 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 Sir JR. Uh, mga kasama, si Sir JR ay may personal blog din, Sir JR. No? Si Sir JR po kasi ay kumbaga parang passion na niya no? ang magbahagi ng kanyang kaalaman sa mathematics education. At uh, napakarami na po niya no? na mga naibahagi ng mga kaalaman sa kanyang personal blog. Uh, Baka gusto mong anyayahan, uh, Sir JR, ang mga kasama natin, ano, mga ka-mathematics natin sa iyong personal blog. Actually, kahit mga kasayans, ano, pwede rin sa personal blog ni Sir JR. Si Sir JR ay pareho ko rin ano, na nagbabasa ng The Joy of X. <laughs> Isa pong kwan ito, libro about mathematics for uh, non-math uh, people. Ako po ay non-mathematics people, pero sobrang na-appreciate ko po itong uh, The Joy of X. Uh, Sir JR, anyayahan po natin ang mga kasama natin sa iyong personal blog. Ako, uh, Mike, sa, ano, sa mathandmultimedia.com, pero hindi ko edit official, no? Uh, so hindi walang nag-edit, minsan may mga errors, but um, of course, I'm... Personal blog. Uh, personal. Right. Mathandmultimedia.com. May mga JoJo Bread tutorials dyan, pero matagal na siyang hindi na-update. So, ang last update, pa isa-isa na lang yan dahil wala ng time. No? But they can check out the JoJo Bread tutorials there. Okay, so um, ayan. So yun po ang uh, Gibra Institute of Manila po at saka ang personal blog ni si Sir uh, JR. Uh, Sir JR, kanina natanong ko si Miss Esa ano, kung ano yung pinaka mahalaga or pinaka importanteng uh, challenge ano, na na-encounter niya learning this uh, these uh, programs. I understand, Sir JR, non-programmer ka rin. Ano? Kung baga parang by profession, hindi ka naman talaga programmer, kundi uh, isa kang math uh, educator, right? Uh, Mike, ano din, may background ako sa programming. So, ah, may... that's good. Oo. Hindi siya... Pero itong background sa programming, uh, how, how, did you, uh, how, how did you get it? Uh, ano ano sa... ka nito ng background? Sir JR, ko ay computer science, yung masters ko, yung math. So, may background talaga ako sa program. That explains it, oo. Pero kung halimbawa, tulad ni Esa, tulad ko, tulad halimbawa ng marami sa mga kasama natin na nanonood ngayon, ano, or pinapanood ngayon itong webinar natin, um, kung halimbawa, ano, um, wala kang programming background, uh, ano yung pinaka-importante challenge na pwede mong uh, makaharap, maka-enkwentro sa... Well, paggawa nito? Yung kahit ako naman, kahit may programming background, pero mahirap. It's very difficult to memorize the codes. No? So, codes? Mahirap siyang i-memorize, no? And uh, of course, um, isa nakakalimutan mo siya, no? <laughs> ang, ang, ang isa sa akin, personally, yung aking challenge is dahil iba-iba yung language na alam ko. Minsan, yung isang language, nakocode ko siya dun sa kinocode ko na hindi pala yun yung language. So, <laughs> Troubleshoot ako. Uh, sabi ko, ano kaya yung mali dun sa code ko? Yun pala ang problema ko yung pari yung C na punta sa, sa Python. So, yun yung challenge sa akin. Minsan, napagpapalit ko yung codes. Kasi <laughs> parang may for loop sa C, for example. May for loop sa Python. Uh, so, yun, yun, yun. So, merong limitation sa, sa mga platforms. Hmm. Kumbaga parang hindi siya universal or sa lengguahe ko, eh, cross-platform na Although pare-pareho sila ng logic, like for loop, it's a repeating loop. Mm, okay. Tayo na. Loop siya, loop, pero uh, meron siyang code sa C, iba na yung code niya sa C, iba yung code niya sa Python, iba yung code niya sa, sa C++, for example. So magkakaiba, magkakaiba sa bawat language. Yun ang problema pag, pag different languages yung inaaral. But LaTeX, uh, madali ang LaTeX kasi I think They can just copy and paste. Madami namang resources. No? So, if they want to do that, that I think doable naman siya. Okay. Um, and non uh, programming. Okay, there's a question here for both of you. Um, do we have LaTeX codes for arc of a circle in MS Word? Um, when we say, um, sorry, sa clarify ko ha, symbol ba to o yung art mismo yung idodrawing natin? So kung symbol, meron po sa MS Word, pero kung yung drawing mismo, I would suggest to utilize yung mga text editors na po ng LaTeX. Kasi may limitations po ang interface ng LaTeX sa Word. 
Okay, so mas mainam siyang gamitin sa mga text editor. Or I think Sir JR could share kung paano siya nalang gawin din sa GeoGebra na may integration. I think mas magandang i-gawin yung, kung yung, um, what do you call this, kung yung visuals mismo, I think text editors or GeoGebra could be utilized. Sir JR? Uh, specifically, hindi ko siya maalala, no? pero alam ko meron kasi nagawa ko na siya before. Meron meron siya. Sa GeoGebra. Hmm. Uh, sa GeoGebra and LaTeX naman, same lang naman yung code. So, anywhere mm -hmm. na pwede siya. Uh, hindi ko lang maalala yung code at the moment, no? but uh, you, you can look it up. No? Pwede, pwede. May, merong code yan. Yung part. Uh -oh. Siguro we post na lang natin later no? pag nahanap ko ulit. Yes. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, uh, mga kasama, no? sa mga kasama natin na nasa Facebook ngayon, kung meron po kayong mga tanong, pakichat lang po sa ating uh, chat box at kukolektahin po ito ng ating mga kasama. Um, tingnan po natin kung um, ilan pa po ang pwede nating sagutin sa mga tanong. Um, okay. Uh, Sir JR, no, um, kung halimbawa, um, kung halimbawa, Sir JR, ah, uh, okay, there's a question here. What activity are you planning to develop using what you have learned in today's? Ah, okay, ito yung sa wrap up question na natin. Pero before that, ano, before our wrap up question, ah, uh, Sir JR, um, tanong ko lang, um, halimbawa sa science, ano, um, paano, maliban dun sa mga circles na ganon, ano, uh, sa pag uh, gawa mo ano, ng mga relative... Ang ganda nun, ano, parang ano yun, uh, according to scale yun, yung mga relative distances ng mga planets to the sun and uh, mga relative distances nila from each other or, uh, or, or random ito? Yung distances ay hindi siya relative kasi impossible siya with the scale, no? Pero oh. yung rotation nila ay That's... accurate. The rotations are accurate kasi... Mas may mga planet na mas mabilis, syempre ay mas malapit sa sun, diba? Oo. Oh, oh. Elliptical ba ito? Sorry, hindi ko masyado maalala kanina. Elliptical or circular? Elliptical siya. Well, well in reality, hindi naman talaga siya circle, no? Pero, uh, yung, yun nga, yung mathematical modeling is just uh, the model of the real world. So, mahirap naman talaga na... Mahirap. Uh, mahirap siya. It, hindi siya kaya ng GeoGebra, kumbaga. Ang, ang tanong ko, Sir JR, uh, Miss Esa, um... Anong, ano, sa anong bagay pa, no? sa anong uh, lesson pa halimbawa ng science pwedeng gamitin ang mga bagay na ito? I think limitless siya kasi mathematics is one of the languages of science, di ba? It's a language. So, um, di ba? It's a language itself. So, hindi kasi ako talaga science major but I could just imagine yung applications niya sa physics and sa ah, chemistry. Yeah, uh -huh. right, right, right. So, ako kasi ay dahil mas mamasa kong tao, yun yung dalawang science na na-appreciate ko talaga kasi marami siyang mathematics involved. So, with physics and math, LaTeX is very much used in physics um, papers. So, definitely sa physics, marami po siyang application. Um, uh, Sir JR, uh, uh, how would you, ad uh, paano, nyo, paano mo i-advise ito? Ano ang gamit nito sa mga non-math uh, people na kasama natin ngayong hapon nito sa webinar nito? Well, lahat naman kasi, lahat naman ng, Sir Mike, lahat ng, may 3D ang GeoGebra, no? So, yung mga modeling, no? pwede nilang, actually, sa arts, kinagamit siya, no? Uh, I have a lot of applets, hindi ko lang mapakita lahat, but uh, pwede siyang sa arts, uh, pwede gumawa yung mga sudyante ng artwork. Pero may hidden mathematics doon kasi yung mga symmetry, di ba? Yung rotation. Uh, Regamit talaga siya. Na. Sa, sa physics naman, yung movement, for example, yung acceleration, I think pwede siyang i-model si Georgia Brown. Although, hindi ko pa siya natatry, no? But, uh, <laughs> okay. Ayan, baka pwede makikollaborate din sa inyo, ano? Ang mga kasama natin, mga kasama teachers, ano? Na interesado sa paggamit ng mga program na ito. Okay lang po ba sa inyo yan? Apo, may, may ano tayo, may, uh, we are planning to have a free course next year doon sa how to, although may yung course 1 yun yun and uh, course 2 and course 3 will be on teaching. So the, I think the course 1 will be free. Uh, although plan pala, I think uh, it will push through next year. So, nice. 
Manila yung ano, uh, they can just uh, like the George Bryan Institute of Manila uh, Facebook page para maging updated sila. And of course, uh, NISMED uh, website. No? Uh, at sa syempre, dito rin sa kasama uh, FB page at saka sa kasama website. Uh, something to look forward to, Sir JR. Ano? Um, mga kasama will keep you posted about uh, itong mga sinasabi ni Sir JR. Ano? Na training ito, Sir JR. Ano? Training course. Yeah, oo. So we'll keep you posted um uh, mga kasama. Um subaybayan so niyo rin po ano uh, from time to time visit our uh, kasama Facebook page. Uh Sir JR, Miss Esa, we don't have a lot of questions so far. Um pero well siguro sa nature ng ating topic ngayong hapon na no. Pero uh, ang mga kasama natin, mga kasama, um uh, Uh, feel free you know, to just write down your questions uh, sa ating uh, Facebook page, sa chat box. At um, subukan po natin ano, na kolektahin pa rin ang mga tanong ninyo kahit pagkatapos po ano, ng ating uh, session at uh, i-forward po natin ang mga tanong nito kina Sir JR at kina uh, Miss Esa. At uh, susubukan po natin uh, sagutin kung ano man po ang kaya natin sagutin. Um, okay, so... Um, Marami ho pala tayo rin. Actually, ang mga audience natin, Sir JR, uh, Ms. Esa, are from all over the Philippines. As Hello sa uh, Schools Division Office ng Sipalay City. Ayan. Mukhang uh, marami-rami po sila na kasama natin ngayong hapon na ito. <laughs> Oo. Um, so, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat yan sa Sipalay City. Itong Sipalay City, ito yung uh, uh, dito, dito galing si Ma'am Celia Balbin na... Um, na na project leader po natin dito sa kasama. Okay, so uh, muli maraming salamat Sir JR at Miss Esa sa pagbabahagi niyo po ng inyong expertise ngayong hapon na ito. Uh, ngayon po, um, dumako na po tayo sa ating wrap-up question. Okay, so um, here now is our wrap-up question. What activity are you planning to develop using what you have learned in today's webinar. Mga kasama, uh, yan po ang ating wrap-up question. Ano pong mga activities ang, ini, ang, ang naiisip nyo po ano, na pwede nyo maihanda o ma-develop ano, gamit kung ano man po itong natutunan natin ngayong hapon na ito mula, sa, mula kina uh, Sir JR at Miss Esa. <clears throat> okay, uh, muli maraming salamat everyone for uh, joining us in this webinar. Um, okay, so yan po yung wrap-up question natin. Comment your answers below, mga kasama. Share with us your ideas and suggestions. We will be featuring some of the best and most relevant answers on our Facebook page tomorrow. Let us continue the conversation, mga kasama, on www.kasamateachers.ph. Once again, uh, thank you, Sir J.R. Bautista and Ms. Esa Capule Navarro for uh, sharing with us your expertise. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat sa pagsama nyo sa amin sa kasama webinar session na ito on teaching mathematics through text and tech. We value your feedback, mga kasama, to help us improve our webinar sessions. Kindly click on the link in the pinned comment or the link in the caption to answer a quick survey. For helpful and relevant learning resources, join us by signing up for free at www.kasamateachers.ph. On behalf of UP NISMED, Gokong Way Brothers Foundation, and Kasama Teachers Community, thank you all for participating in our session today. Keep safe and stay healthy, mga kasama. See you in our next webinar sessions. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat.